Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash malicious compliance, where people tend to get what they ask for, not what they deserve. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today. And as always, Steve-O and I have made sure the lineup of stories are wild. So sit back, kick your feet up, grab your dog, cat, and call Gram Gram, because the stories today are absolutely awesome. Guys, I hope you enjoy them, and do remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So, my brother and I aren't on the best of terms. I do envy people with good relationships to their siblings because being around my brother is just draining. Now, my brother seems to follow two very strict rules. The first is that he's always right, even when evidence is presented against him. I swear, the guy has developed immunity towards logic and reason. And the second rule he follows is that I'm always wrong. Whatever I say, he has to argue against. It's obnoxious. Luckily, we no longer live in the same country, so we do see each other at most two times a year, which is barely tolerable. So this story takes place in December last year. I had traveled to my parents to celebrate Christmas, and so had my brother, his wife, and his two kids, who are two and four years old. All of us are staying in my parents' house, and as you can imagine, it's rather crowded and the noise level far exceeds that of what I'm used to. One morning, I wake up around 8 a.m., my brother and the kids are already awake and eating breakfast, from what I can hear. I decide to browse Reddit on my phone for about an hour just to avoid more interaction than I have to. When I finally decide to leave bed and have breakfast, my brother and his family have moved on to the TV room. The TV's on and they're watching cartoons on YouTube. I make myself two sandwiches and then join them. My brother then hands me the remote and says, Just put on whatever four-year-old's pointing at. I need to go to the bathroom. I told him, Alright, I can do that. Unlike his father, the little guy's actually pretty cool to be around. So we browse YouTube videos, eventually setting on Barney the Purple Dinosaur. My brother by this point has returned. Eventually, the video does end and a related video pops up. My four-year-old nephew's pointing at a video called Scientifically Accurate, Barney the Purple Dinosaur. Now, I've been browsing the internet long enough to know that this is not a child-friendly video. So the conversation goes as follows. My four-year-old nephew looks at me and says, Uncle, please put that one on. So I say, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea, bud. How about another one? My nephew then says, But I want to see that one. So at this point, my brother comes in and says, Put it on. He wants to see it. I begin to tell him, I really don't put it on. I told him, trust me, dude. It's, dude, just put it on. So I then tell him, All right, but this one's on you. So I mentally prepare myself for the total crap storm that's about to go down as I place the remote on the table. So no more than 15 seconds into the video, the first images of cartoon gore is displayed. Barney the dinosaur then goes to bite everyone's head off. The two-year-old starts to cry. The maternal instincts of my brother's wife kicks in and she just starts yelling at my brother to turn it off. Now, by this point, the video has reached the part where all of Barney's little human friends are starting to get killed. My brother finally manages to turn the video off. My four-year-old nephew, having seen forbidden content, is now throwing a tantrum over not getting to see the entire video. My brother's wife does her best to comfort the two-year-old, but she's crying her eyes out. Despite the mayhem, all I can feel is total inner peace. Never has utter chaos been so satisfying. Finally, my brother turns to me and says, why would you put that on knowing what it is? In a calm voice, I simply reply, Because you told me to. My brother then says, But you knew what it was. I then tell him, And you didn't listen when I tried to warn you. You never tried to warn me. So I sigh. At this point, I just leave. There's no winning this argument. After all, he's always right, even when the evidence is screaming otherwise. When I first started reading the post, I thought OP was going to show a happy Tree Friends video to his nephew. But then he mentioned scientifically accurate Barney the Purple Dinosaur. And then I searched up the video. And let me tell you guys, <laughs> a T-Rex around a bunch of kids that's scientifically accurate. Here's a screenshot. <laughs> so yeah. So the video has like 25 million views and it's pretty crazy, guys. And I can't believe I've never seen this video before. So, this one happened a few months ago at the airport, in Madrid, Spain. I witnessed it, but I'm not directly involved with it. I was sitting near a gate, well in advance for my flight. The previous flight to use the gate was still boarding its last passengers. It was a pretty short one to Lisbon, so probably less than an hour flight time. So then comes textbook Karen with her suitcase. 
going straight towards the counter and without any form of politeness, starts complaining to one of the two Gates agents. The conversation was more or less like this. Karen says, I know you have a free seat in first class. I'm a loyal member of the airline. Can you upgrade me? She then slams a card on the counter. The agent then says, I'm sorry, but I can't randomly upgrade people. Plus, you have an economy basic ticket. Even if I could, we would upgrade any standard economy passenger before you. Finally, this is a silver card. We do have gold and platinum members on the flight, so we would also upgrade them first. Now, I also have to note that European airlines typically do not automatically upgrade passengers like they do in the US. Also, the difference between first and economy is usually not that much. The seats are the same, but in front of the plane, with a blocked middle seat and slightly better food. That's it. So Karen goes on and says, They've already boarded. If you don't upgrade me, I will never use this airline again. At this point, Gate Agent 2 makes an announcement about final call for passengers that Karen ignores completely. The agent then tells her, Ma'am, I repeat, I do not have the power to upgrade anybody per airline policy. It would not be fair to those who actually paid for the ticket. At this, Karen says, The seat's free. I'm sure you can make an exception. Once again, I cannot, but I would recommend you to board because... Karen interrupts him and says, So you will upgrade me, right? At this point, the agent is now annoyed. He says, Ma'am, for the third time, this is not something I can do. You are the last passenger we're waiting for, so can you please go to the plane? So at this, Karen yells and throws a tantrum. She says, I won't move from the counter until you upgrade me to first class. Now, at this, the agent's trying to tell her that the plane has to take off soon and she's the last passenger to board. But she's not having it. Karen says, Unless you're telling me I'm upgraded, I don't want to hear it. The agent says all right, and then one or two minutes passes, and Karen says, So have you made up your mind to have me upgraded? The agent then tells her, Actually ma'am, the gate is now closed. We're not accepting late passengers anymore. I would suggest you go to the customer service desk to rebook your flight. Have a nice day. Now at this, the woman loses it. She starts screaming, What? I've been here for like 10 minutes. The agent tells her, yes, but you refused twice to board the plane, and made it very clear that you would not move from the desk until you got an upgrade, which I told you five times I cannot do. We can't delay the plane because of you. But you should have told me. He then says, again, I'm sorry, but you made it clear that you didn't want to hear about it if it was not about your upgrade, which once again, I cannot do. So I then watched Karen leave with a defeated and infuriated look. It was pretty fun to watch, I have to say. I also have no idea whether Karen could be rebooked for free, but I hope not. My friends, is this a tactic that some people actually use? They come up to the gate agent last minute and ask to be upgraded to first class? I absolutely love how she ended up missing her flight. And here's a tip, Karen. And and guys, it works 100% of the time if you want to sit first class, okay? You can use this as well. So the best way to be able to sit first class on a flight is to pay for a freaking first class ticket. Come on, Karen. So I was living with my girlfriend and a roommate, and we split the cost of every bill evenly, even though each bill was in one person's name. Well, that was the idea, but I naively helped my girlfriend pay her part of the bills, which was basically completely paying for most of them. The rent was in my name, and the electricity was in my girlfriend's name. Well, I eventually got tired of her crap. The arguments, the smelly gerbils, not doing chores, and we broke up. It was messy. She took ages to move out, making sure to mooch every penny she could before leaving. So when she left, I immediately started a new electricity account in my name. About a week later, I got a letter of confirmation in the mail, but I also received the electricity bill for the last three months my ex was living with us. Now, we couldn't even pay it if we wanted to because the bill was in her name, so I shot her a text. I said to her, Yo, You got the electricity bill in the mail. It's 120 bucks, so come pick up 40 bucks from each of us. My ex replied, Um, where's the other 40 bucks? We agreed that I wouldn't pay bills after I moved out. As if she did before. I replied to her, You were still living here for the time period of the bill. She says, No, I'm not gonna pay a thing. We had an agreement. I told her, Well, you can come over to get our parts, or you can pay it alone. She says, The way I see it, you can either bring me the 120 to my place or have fun in the dark. LOL. Now at this point I realize that she doesn't know that I started my own account with the electricity provider. 
She thought that by refusing to pay, the provider would cut our lights. Good way to mooch another 40 bucks from us, right? But that's not quite what happened. So a few weeks later, I received another letter from the electricity company with her name on it. Probably a late payment warning. So I sent a text to tell her, and she responded, LOL, why are you so desperate to talk to me? You know what you have to do. So then next month, another letter came for her. This one was probably late fees, and I have to guess because I never opened them. So I message her, and she says, I thought I told you to never talk to me again. Oh, well, as you wish, ma'am. So more letters arrived, but from a new address. I googled the sender's new address and found that they were debt collectors. Scary stuff. Too bad I couldn't say a word to her. Now about two or three months later, I receive a phone call from my ex, and she says, What are these people calling my parents' house for? I've got all these late fees, blah blah blah, debt collectors. I told her if she wants a part of the bill, she knows what to do. Now realizing that she had no other choice, she caved and she came for the money. My roommate and I didn't give her a cent towards the late fees, and I probably looked so smug giving her my money for the last time. If I were OP, I would not have given her a single dime. She's the one who said not to text or call anymore, and wanted no contact, so I would have left it at that, for sure. On top of that, OP did try to tell her many times that she had overdue notices in the mail, so that's definitely on her. But I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh. Guys, what do you think of the situation? Let me know in the comments down below. I also love how she said, have fun in the dark. Like, clearly you have no idea how utilities work. Okay, so in high school, I was working at the local Home Depot as a head cashier. I kept track of all the active registers and made sure things ran smoothly. I held this position for quite some time, about one or two years, and I enjoyed it pretty well. The customers were nice, and my coworkers were mostly craftsmen and gardeners with all interesting stories to share. Now, before we go any further, let me explain something. I am severely allergic to nearly every form of pollen, and I do mean every form. I take allergy medication, but even then, if I'm too close to flowers for too long, I'll begin to break out in hives and throw up most of the time. So after about three months working in the winter, the spring season was upon us. The worst season for my allergies. So one day, about three of the garden section cashiers called off sick. Now they're pretty reliable people, so I had no problem finding people to cover for them. As I go to my manager to inform him of the position changes, my manager just looks at me and says, You can handle the garden section on your own, can't you? I tell my manager that I can cover for at most 15 minutes before my allergies flare up and I'll have to leave. He then states, We don't have any documents on file that state that you're not fit to work in the garden section. So unless you come to me with a doctor's note stating the allergies, I couldn't give less of a flying F. Now, I don't know who crapped in his Cheerios that morning, but I complied, saying, I want to be sure of what you're asking. You want me to work in the section which is hazardous to my health, instead of placing equally capable employees in that section. He then replied, Did I stutter? So I said, Okay, sure. I then make my way down to the garden section, and immediately my eyes are stinging. I decide that I'm going to stick it out for my boss's sake, no matter how crappy my service becomes. The first 10 minutes are pretty uneventful, but then a customer asked me about the rashes on my arms, and I said, Home Depot does not care about my allergies, as I don't have official paperwork. The customer looks extremely concerned, asking for my manager's name. At this point, I was feeling nausea hit me, so I excuse myself, run and throw up in the trash can. The man follows me and asks me the manager's name, and I say, I work under Bob so-and-so. The customer reassures me that I'll be okay, and tells me that I should just go home. It turns out that this guy, Nick so-and-so, was a higher-up at the Home Depot's regional management, and he was my boss's boss. So naturally, I comply with the chain of command, and I head up to the locker room to pack up. As I'm packing, Bob comes in, fuming and cursing telling me that I have no right to leave yet and that my shift's not over for another five hours. I simply say to him, Nick told me to go home. Now at this, Bob's face gets redder as he threatens to fire me, saying I was lying, and he tells me to go back out, or else. With that, I comply, knowing that I'll see Nick on my way out. I pass Nick, still in the orange apron, and he asks me where I'm going. I say that Bob told me to go back to work and Nick's expression goes from concerned to furious, as he takes my apron from me and tells me that I'll be paid for the full shift and that I just need to go home. I come into work the next day to see that Bob's nameplate has been removed from the office. 
I asked HR rep what happened, and apparently after I left, Nick stormed into Bob's office and proceeded to perform a full audit on all of his past employee complaints. Needless to say, there was an opening for the store management position, and I was given a week's vacation for my troubles. My satisfaction was huge. Guys, Bob definitely deserved to be canned after that. He was in no position to be a leader. Employees' health should be the number one concern for any manager, and the way he forced OP to work when OP let it known that he was severely allergic is just terrible. Like, it's not like OP refused to do the work. He couldn't do the work. And what Bob did could have potentially led to some big lawsuits, and I hope he never gets a management position ever again. So I worked in a deli, and there was this really rude lady who would always order the smokehouse ham. But she would always call it plain ham. Now, we did have a plain ham, which had no extra flavor, it was just ham, salt, and water. But she wanted the smokehouse ham. The lady was probably in her mid-40s, always dressed to the nines with designer sunglasses and a fancy hat, and she always complained when there was a line at the deli counter. One day, after telling her repeatedly that smoked ham is not in fact plain ham when she made her weekly appearance, it was during a customer rush. I saw her join the line. It was six people deep with two people working the counter. And she got progressively more angry as she had to wait the five minutes until I helped her. We're talking foot tapping, muttering under her breath, looking at the watch, dramatic size, the works. I kept an eye on her while my coworkers are clearly rushing to help get the line down. Finally, she gets to me and before I can even finish my sentence, I get cut off and she says, about time, get me half pound of plain ham, now. Now I know what she wants, but what she asked for is on sale, in the case right in front of her. Under her very nose, and since it was on sale, I'd pre-sliced a full tray of it and it was ready to go. Plausible deniability. So I reach down, grab half pound of meat, and throw it in the Ziploc baggie for her. I then weigh it, slap the sticker on, hand it to her, before she can realize her mistake. And I say, thanks for shopping, have a great day. Now, the rude Karen then gets a look like I just took a dump in a baggie and handed it to her. While I'm helping the current customer, she stomps back over to me and she says, Excuse me? What's this? Now, I did have a confused look on my face, and I told her, uh, half a pound of plain ham like you asked for. Now, I can see that she's still waiting for me to come back to her out of the corner of my eye. But she made it very clear what she wanted, that she was in a hurry... And as I've already given it to her, she didn't need my further assistance. She then gets mad, silently, just watching as I cheerfully help all the other customers. The line doesn't die down. She then stomps off to customer service and returns with not my manager, but the entire store manager, about 15 minutes later. He comes into the deli and says, The lady out there says you gave her the wrong order. Now, with an innocent look on my face, I said, I remember her. She was rude in line and at the counter. The extent of her order was, and I quote, get me half a pound of plain ham now. So I gave her the half pound of ham. It's on sale this week and the entire transaction took under 30 seconds because we already have plain sliced ham for the sale this week. I was super polite to her. The manager then rolls his eyes and says, she says she doesn't want this ham. She wants the other plain ham. I told him, we literally only sell one brand of plain ham. We don't have other plain hams. That's it. It's on sale this week. He then walks out from behind the counter and starts to explain to her how wrong she is when she starts to point to the smokehouse ham that she really wanted. The woman's furious. She's red-faced, throwing a quiet little temper tantrum as the manager returns to me and says, she says she wants that plain ham. Now with a confused look on my face, I said, but that's smoked ham. She said plain. Are you sure she wants smoked? This is smokehouse ham. It's definitely smoke-flavored and not plain. My manager goes back to double-check. He then comes to me and confirms with me, and I look her dead in the eyes and say, I'm so sorry for the confusion, ma'am. I'll go get your smoked ham sliced. Next time, please make sure that you're ordering the correct ham when you're at the counter. The only plain ham we sell is this ham, holding it up for her to see. Smokehouse ham is a smoked ham. Let us know that you want the smokehouse ham, and we won't run into this issue again. And since I said that with my perfect customer service face on while standing next to the store manager, she just had to stand there with her puckered lemon face. So all in all, I got the pettiest of revenges, by wasting her time and putting her in a position where I was able to condescendingly talk down to her and explain her mistake in public, with a crowd, while the manager stood next to us. 
My manager said that he got a compliment from the store manager saying how well I handled an upset and abusive customer that day. My friends, anybody else craving ham after this story? Opie handled that situation beautifully. Make a Karen feel dumb? Check. Impress the store manager? Check. Give us a wonderful tale about a life in a deli? Also check. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash malicious compliance. Guys, if you enjoyed the stories today, do give it a thumbs up. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, I'll link it right here. A Karen gets mad that OP won't take off her fake leg so her son can play with it. It's such a crazy story, so check it out if you haven't, and myself and Steve-O will see you guys in the next one. We love you.